Okay, folks. Uh, whoop, let me take care of that. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, a panel on our Proving Ground program here at B-Sides LV, something we started, uh, as far as I'm aware, pretty much one of the first in the industry. Um, this is a uh, mentored track for first-time speakers at an international you know, security conference. So um, <clears throat> a lot of the folks that come through are actually you know, accomplished security professionals already. They just haven't actually gotten up in front of an audience and, uh, you know, stared them all in their naked eye holes. Um, so we are, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, joined today by uh, our current and uh, future track chairs for the Proving Ground track and a uh, number of our current uh, mentees and speakers in the program. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Guy, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell folks a little bit about yourself and... Uh... Uh, my name is Guy McDudefellow. I've been one of the track chairs for Proving Ground since 2014. Um, and when I'm not here, I am a senior software engineer at Tenable and I have a, a recurring makerspace habit. <laughs> All right, uh, Phil? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, hi, everyone, my name's Phil Young. Uh, I gave my very first talk here at B-Sides 2012 in the mentor program. I was one of the mentees. And since then, I have been a mentor every year. Um, and if you do it enough, they just promote you up to the track chair. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, although we were joking earlier about how like, the less hair you have, the better your chances of being the track chair. <laughs> so um, when I'm not doing this, and by the way, I love the program. I'm a huge supporter of the program. I think it's probably one of the best in the industry. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I am the director of mainframe pen testing for NetSpy. So yeah, uh, Guy has been leading this track for like the last decade, um, and uh, you know, is we're we're in a right now we're in kind of a two year handoff period between the two of them. Uh, Phil shadowing Guy this year, and next year uh, Guy's going to shadow Phil, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I think it's going to you know we're looking to to take this program up to the next level. Um, <clears throat> Guy, can you tell us a little bit about like maybe how this got started, what the original impetus was, you know what we're what the what we're trying to do with this track? Sure. So. The program started, say, like 2011. Uh, it was it was originally run by Moe and I don't remember her new handle. But the, I came on about three years after uh, after well, my wife spoke at the program, um, and we started doing uh, run throughs. And they went, "Hey, that's a good idea. Would you like to be a chair?" And I went, "Uh, sure." Um, and yeah, took it over outright in 2014. Um, and the entire time, our, what we've been trying to do is get across how important it is to be able to tell a story. A lot of what we do as InfoSec professionals is try to communicate stories of risk to people who are in, decision or in positions of being able to make decisions about that risk. And the better we can tell that story, the more likely we are to succeed in helping to protect people and protect the organizations we work for. And so being able to present at a conference like this is one way of getting better at telling those stories. And so that's basically the impetus of the program. We pair you with somebody who has a lot of experience in speaking, and you spend basically 10 to 12 weeks, depending on the year, uh, working intensively with that person to workshop your talk, and at the end, you get a speaker credit at an international conference. So, um, yeah. It's what uh, <clears throat> what kind of impact uh, do you think this program has been having? Have you seen you know changes in the industry, changes in you know uh, uh, speak you know people have gone through the program, coming back. You know what what, uh, what like some, what's made this worth it? In some ways, it's. It's interesting watching some mentees. It's very clearly they're they're power leveling through their career, and they end up being in positions like this guy. You know, started as a speaker and now is running pen testing at a on on mainframes. 
Um, I've seen folks get their work covered in the BBC. I've seen people on uh, NHK and national Jap Japanese national broadcasting. Um, it, 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 it basically just, it's like a shot in the arm for your career. How about you, Phil? What uh, what have you seen? Like you know, you, you, I know you're involved in other conferences. And, yes, you know, very much. Um, so, um, for those who don't know, um, this program has been it's 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 not just impactful here; it it influences other conferences, and I know that for a fact because I helped someone put a you know put a proposal together where they created the Black Hat Coaching Program. That's not a thing that existed like in 2019 or earlier. And, and that is a direct, you know, that's a direct cause of this program here. I was talking about how wonderful the program is here and how Black Hat would benefit from having speaking coaches or anything like that. And then now they have a very robust coaching program. It, it's run completely different than the program is here, but it's the same effect. The people are confident in giving their talks because they've had someone who's had that experience coach them through it. So that to me is the like, like, like it's spreading, which is, you know, speaking is hard and speaking for the first time is extra hard. And so it's nice to have someone in your corner helping you do that. So um, <clears throat> what would you say like are, and you know, this open to either of you and then after you answer, I think maybe we'll, we'll introduce some of our panelists here and kind of get their take on this as well. What are, some of the most memorable like talks or moments within this program for you? One of my favorite talks of all time was actually one of my first mentees who, who talked about the ethical implications of social engineering with robots. And one of the things that she did was basically recreate the, um, not the Stanford Prison Experiment. It's the other major psychology test, but with robots. Um, and basically getting people to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do just because a robot told them to do it. And I was just like, that is terrifying and also amazing. Um, another one of my favorite talks was somebody who had gotten a summer internship at NATO talking about how they pen tested satellites. And this was two years before DEF CON started their satellite hacking competition. And so that was just fascinating. Like, here's how we take this thing that's in orbit that could fall on people and make sure it doesn't fall on people. So yeah, that um, every year we've done Proving Ground pregame has been extremely rewarding because we get to see people who are, we, we get to help them get over the butterflies. Mm -hmm. We get to help them you know, just sort of put that last little bit of polish in the talk and before they send mm -hmm. out the door. And that's, that's always very rewarding. Uh, but those are the those are the ones I can think of at the moment. But you, well, you definitely stole mine. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, one of my mentees, um, she was doing research, uh, maybe a different talk, but also about satellites and adversarial threats to satellites. And it was a very <clears throat> cool talk about like, mm -hmm. and that's nothing. Look, I work in mainframes. That is not something that I would get exposed to if it weren't for me being a mentor, right? Like, because there's so much happening at the con. You know, and so I get exposure to all these things that I would never, ever get exposed to. A um, couple of other memorable ones. I know Cheryl, she gave a talk on shadow IT. That was really, really excellent. And from that talk, her career, it, I've, I've watched her career just explode over the last like eight years or so. So yeah, go ahead. I just, I just thought of one. Um, there's a group of researchers at the University of Florida who used ZMAP to find open, Core routers, core routers that had open SSH, they were accepting open SSH connections. And they hit all of these routers and basically asked what key exchange algorithms they accepted and discovered that something like 40 or 50% of them still accepted DES. Oh. And when the ISPs who ran those core routers discovered this, all of a sudden the key algorithms changed. So that is an <laughs> example of a direct impact that a Proving Ground talk had on yeah. the state of the art. No, I, I, what I love about these is it shows like two things that I really love about this program. One, that this is for first time speakers, not necessarily for people who have never like had an ex extensive career yet, right? You get people who are 
are new out of school but all, and have a great idea, but you also get people who are like accomplished and have done like amazing careers, and this is just their first kind of getting that out into the community, right? Uh, right. And then the because of that, because we draw from kind of a different, you know, more varied crowd, like the the the, the topics that we're that we cover are just fascinating variety, right? In this one track, so and these talks when they come out. Uh, you know, I, I tell people this is not a kiddie pool, right? Like, by the time these things go to stage, they're as good as any talk in the conference. It's like, I'm very excited. There's a talk coming up today that I really want to see. It is about using Skyrim to hack other people's computers with mods. <laughs> that is, it's such a fascinating thing, and I've already seen the talk at once, so I know it's really good. But um, but that's the kind of diversity of talks, like from satellite hacking to mods from a 10 year old game right like like it's it's just amazing yeah so in that vein what i'd like to do is kind of go down the the line here in the panel and uh, you know tell the audience uh you know who you are you know what you, what you do how you um got to proving ground like why you decided to do this and then what you're talking about or what your talk was about when you did it right Hi everybody, my name is Lane Alevsky. I'm originally from Mexico, uh, currently working as a security engineer for Google. Um, this is my first time uh, speaking at Visa Las Vegas, so I'm very happy about it. I have been coming for the last three years, so I feel like it was time for me to contribute back to the community. So yeah, like my talk uh, was yesterday, it was a, a CBE or an open source software, very popular that I found last year, and with that I did a research. Uh, as somebody mentioned, uh, we may have like uh, technical skills, but I, I want to improve my soft skill, communication skills. So that, this was a great opportunity for me to pair with my mentor, uh, who teach me uh, a lot of things about how to communicate better. So I'm very happy and I really appreciate this opportunity. Hi, hello everybody, my name is Master Chen. Um, I was a mentee for Proving Grounds back in 2014, where I did a, a talk on being a con artist. <laughs> and then uh, I've been a mentor ever since. Um, my day job is DevOps. My night job is stalking and OSINT. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to I wanna help build the community. I want to bring up uh, you know, the next generation. And that's why I'm here. Thank you. I'm Lillian Ash Baker. I'm a product security engineer at uh, the Boeing company and Whisk Arrow. Um, I'm a this is the first time that I've done mentorship here at the Proving Grounds track. Um, my mentee did a presentation on airline fare hacking and how to read a lot of the data that's available out there within these internal systems. Um, one of the big parts about doing mentorship here uh, with the Proving Grounds track and everything is not only what you can impart and teach others about, but also what you get to learn as a mentor about your own talk skills, your own speaking style, your own presentation, uh, the way that you put your own presentations together. Hi, I'm Carlos Gonçalves. I'm the CTI leader at Banco do Brasil, a Brazilian public bank. And uh, my, it's my first time here speaking in, in, at Besides. My talk will be about uh, how we are bringing uh, threat and tell data to drive the red, red, blue team, purple team exercises and bring changes to the organization much, much faster, much, uh, much more folks that much. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Paul Wortman. Um, I'm a Bluetooth security researcher and a research scientist for um, Wells. Uh, I'm here as a mentee and give my talk today at 3 p.m. Come and see it. Uh, which is on Bluetooth research and trying to improve and augment the security community's ability to kind of explore the Bluetooth wildlife that's out there and, and really just improve the community's ability to dive into this space a lot more easily. Um, I would say that what I feel like I've gotten out of it so far, though, you know, just nervous with the call, uh, with the uh, presentation coming out, is, um, it's been really useful in helping to kind of reconfigure my thought process on how it is I should present the information that I have, how to best kind of reach the point of what I'm trying to tell you without just fire hosing information at you in the hope that you're as curious about the subject as I am. 
Hi, my name is uh, George Wang. I'm a senior engineer from a company called Cloud Kitchens. Uh, four months ago, I could not have imagined giving a talk at this uh, conference. Uh, and this proving ground actually has been fantastic. I feel tremendously lucky uh, to have a mentor, um, an Australian bloke, um, to help me. Uh, that's really cool. Um, actually, I always want to give a talk somewhere, but never knew the best way of doing it. And uh, my manager just casually said, hey, why don't you submit a talk to B-Size? So I worked hard on it, and the deadline was actually like fast approaching. So I submitted literally like the night before. And he said, basically, it's not a security talk if you don't submit the last minute. So it made me feel a lot better. And I didn't hear back for a B-Size for some time, and assumed that basically it was going to be you know, a wash. But I was able to um, hear back, and actually obviously, obviously be here. So I'm uh, tremendously excited to be here. I'm actually very grateful for the experience and the opportunity to, uh, to do this. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have two more here in the, in the front. Would you like to come up to the mic here and uh, tell your story? Hi, I'm Jen Haverman. I'm a technical director with the government. I work for the National Security Agency. Um, this was, and this is my first time being a mentor, um, and it was fantastic. Uh, I'm OG, I guess what they would consider OG, right? You've been around long enough, you're OG. So, you know, I, if you're in the career field for like 30 some years, you get tired of hearing yourself talk. So this is a great way to prepare and help new voices in the community come together. So, I, and my guy gives his talk um, this afternoon on Nix and Flakes, and I am not a DevOps person, um, but this was a great way for me to get more exposure to DevOps and get him to get his crowd excited about DevOps. So I need to connect him with you later. Thank you. And, and finally, I, we have Soya Aoyama, who has a, a pre pre carefully prepared a statement to read for us. Uh, this is one of the things I love most. Please do come up. Uh, it's one of the things I love most about this program is we work with folks who, all the time, who uh, are not native English speakers, right? And we can still help them participate in this, given that it's a lingua franca for this industry, you know, they can be part of the conversation in a way they couldn't otherwise. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Soya Aoyama, um, founder and organizer of B-Size Tokyo. Uh, my first presentation was at Proving Grant in 2017. I thought uh, proving grant program was great. So I've been involved in uh, many activity so far. In 2018, I founded Besides Tokyo and encouraged uh, Besides Tokyo speaker to present at proving grant. In fact, uh, Besides Tokyo speakers uh, become a, a proving grant speaker. And I have been uh, supporting uh, them as a mentor uh, since last year. Thank you. Thank you. Arigatouzaimasu. All right, so um, I would love if there's any, you know, I have questions I can ask the panel, but also if there's anyone from the audience who would like to, you know, ask a question about the program, we have a microphone up here. So, you know, please feel free to just, you know, line up there and, and fire away at anybody on either side of the room here. But um, so I, I got to say, um, you know, of this experience, you know, you, you've gone through this, what, um, what you say was like, the biggest thing that you learned, like what was your big takeaway? Was there anything that, you know, we'll just, again, just go down the line or, or you know, and, you know, what was the biggest thing you got out of this, right? Uh, one of the biggest takeaway for me was to put myself in the shoes of the, of the people attending my talk, like don't make assumptions, like, uh, you know, the way to present the information uh, make sure to always, if somebody is looking at your presentation and get distracted, uh, and then look back to the screen, uh, the person should be able to very quickly, you know, know what's going on, right? So the way we present the data uh, is one of the most important things because you could have the best research, the most amazing research that you have done, but if you are not able to communicate it or express it in a, in the, in a very efficient way, uh, it's the same as uh, don't, not having anything, right? So that's one of the, of the things, how you learn how to do nice presentation, nice slides. And I feel like that's going to improve my, my career. And those are things that I can apply in my day-to-day -day job. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, actually, to, to piggyback off of that, um, I think it's, it's great to get out of your own mind uh, and into the mind of your audience. And so uh, the, this program has really helped uh, with, with kind of organizing that and just uh, making it a really nice uh, place and, and way to do that. So. Yeah, so I actually learned something very important from Guy the other day, which is when you're about to do a presentation, go to the bathroom. <laughs> it calms everybody right down. <laughs> well, for me, I think it was, I, I, it's my first time, so I don't have that much experience. So anyway, but for me, I think it was to think about uh, how, what are you going to present and don't, don't just read the books, don't tell what's in the books, tell your story. What, what are your experience, how are you doing things, what are, what are your results, what went wrong, how do you manage to, to, to fix that? I think that's a, 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 big, uh, a, great, a big change to just, don't, don't just tell what's in the books, tell your story. So piggybacking off that, I would uh, I would agree. I think I think the biggest thing I learned was to really um, boil down and be concise about what it is I wanted to get across. Sure, I may have weeks, months, years of of research and practice that I could just throw up on you of of just a mountain of information. But really, what was clear was to get that initial hook in, so that the folks that really are interested, that hopefully will help, kind of grow and expand the work that you're trying to share are the ones that get the concept. That once, once you've got that, they'll spend the time. They'll dig into it. They'll, they'll spend the time to really get into the research you're trying to share. But that's a lot harder without presenting it in a really clean and concise way. Uh, I think mine is more about self-discovery and confidence. Um, because giving a speech is obviously a big thing to do, at least for me. And having a room packed with people to see you give a talk really gives you that feeling that you've done something you know, worthwhile. I feel it's hard to get that anywhere else. Another thing too, uh, I guess two things, um, is really like the energy of people here. Everyone is so excited about, excited about everything and there's so much stuff going on. I feel like that's a great gateway to like, learn more about everything in general and having that energy propel you forward uh, into the future, no matter what you do. All right, now I'm, I'm going to flip this so we stop picking on you first every time. But now we'll, we'll start at the other end here. So you get to have, go without any time to think about it. Um, but uh, what did you expect coming into this program? And what surprised you the most about the experience? Yeah, honestly, I had like no idea what to expect. I went to b sides in Austin the year before. And uh, it was pretty chill, like not nearly as big as here. So I assume it'd be just as chill here. Uh, but the number of people who showed up was actually quite overwhelming. And also the quality of speakers here is also quite overwhelming. Like the keynotes given on both states were uh, fantastic, and I was very excited, excited about what, what happened. So that, that was really awesome. Um, and also my mentor, too. I had no idea my mentor was so accomplished in so many fields. And that guy is actually tutoring me on how to give a, a talk. So that was like Michael Jordan coaching you to play basketball, I feel. Uh, <laughs> not, not quite, but I mean, I was quite, quite fortunate to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so I would, I would say I think what I expected to get out of this was to just kind of get better maybe at being able to speak on the subject or, or trying to present my information in a more meaningful way, um, which I think I got, but not in the way that I necessarily expected. I think my mentor did a really great job of kind of opening my mind to how I can improve what it is I'm saying, how it is I can, I can get better at it. I think, I think the main thing that has really surprised me about Proving Grounds is um, People here are fucking smart. I mean, they are really, really smart. And it is a little nerve wracking to have my presentation be this late in the game that I've already seen some really brilliant talks from everyone else in Proving Ground. So yeah, I'm a, li I'm a little more nerve wracked than I thought I would be. Yeah, I agree, f I, I agree with you. And my talk will be the last one. And so, <laughs> but I, I wasn't, as just as you, I, wasn't, uh, I didn't have much expectation because I didn't know what to expect. So it was great. It has been, it has been great. Uh, my mentor helped me ex extract much more information from what I, I was planning at first. And it has been a great experience. Yeah, so I'll say that as a mentor, I didn't really have as much expectations as a lot of the speakers here. 
But uh, one thing that I did get out of it was the satisfaction of, of seeing somebody that you've talked with, you've emailed with, communicated, uh, you know, worked through hard to massage a, a presentation out of a pile of information and see them just absolutely take off and excel at providing that presentation to everybody and seeing how satisfied they are with themselves. Yeah. Well, as a, as a mentee, um, I mean, I expected because of the way that Proving Grounds was advertised, um, I was expecting <laughs> to work on my presentation skills and uh -huh. the, the public speaking aspect of it. Um, what I did not expect was how addicting it would be because <laughs> um, I've been speaking every year since that first year in 2014 yeah. and I love it so much. Um, Wonderful. And then on the mentor, on the mentor side, uh, just meeting people who have great ideas and their need to share that those great ideas. Uh, it's, it's a drug. <laughs> a good one. A good one. It's good crack. <laughs> I, I have the same opinion, but uh, I have a quick story for that. So when, when I get the email that I have been accepted to the proving grounds, my immediate feeling uh, reaction was kind of like anxiety, right? Because it now, now I need to deliver, right? And this is going to be an international conference. I'm pretty sure there's going to be really cool talks way above my level. And then uh, I start feeling the, uh, it's a great commitment, right? You have to uh, meet with your mentor like every week and you have to practice over and over. But uh, it's a good feeling because you see your progress, you out iterate over that, you get feedback, you address it next week. And as he said, it's like very addictive, right? Like seeing how your, your work gets improving over and over, like a little bit every time until you see the final result and people ask you good questions and everybody looks happy. So it was a great experience. Thanks. Uh, Phil, Guy, same question yeah. for both of you, actually. Thank you. Uh, so. One of the things that surprised me the most when I first started being a mentor in the program was the friendships I would make with my mentees. Like I just came in thinking, oh, I'll mentor them. I've given some talks. I'll give them some tips. I am still friends with a lot of my mentees. I still talk to them. We're friends on LinkedIn. We, we see each other here at B-Sides. It was not, that's not what I expected to come out of that, this program. And it, it really is, you know, you really get to build a network being a mentor of like very smart people. So for me, it's two things. One, first of all, it's watching the mentees stand and deliver. Um, anybody can talk for, anybody can info dump. It takes a lot of focused time and effort to put together a cogent 25 minute talk and not run out of time. So watching mentees do that year after year has been one of the most rewarding things, I think, in this program. The other one is just watching people grow. I mean, like watching Master Chen go from giving his first talk to like being a regular repeat mentor and speaker and like becoming an expert in the field has been extremely rewarding. Um, watching uh, Wendy Knox Everett go from giving a talk on uh, very early hacker legal stuff to now she's a CISO at a startup. Uh, and that within the last decade, like that career progression just took off like a rocket. So watching that stuff has been extremely rewarding for me. Hmm. Uh, so <clears throat> back to the other end again here, but uh, you know, just a very uh, kind of classic exercise. Three things about the program. What would you keep? What would you start? Or what would you stop? All right, um, I would definitely keep the mentorship program, like the people mentoring you. Those are very high quality people and I definitely will keep them. Um, what I would stop, um, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that I don't like about it. Um, okay, but what I will start to yeah, be- You're perfect. You're okay. Telling us we're perfect is a valid answer. No, yeah, that's uh, great, no. great. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> I really have nothing negative to say. Um, what, what I start is that perhaps um, tell us to book the hotels earlier because I put one night here and I messed up the rest of the booking. So I ended up having to uh, share rumors when my, my teammates was here. And uh, he, he snores a bit, so it's, it's not, not fantastic. But it was really my fault because I didn't really like figure out the logistics. Um, and also, I didn't realize DEF CON, you have a shuttle to go into DEF CON. So I also messed it up too. So I'm actually in like a really far hotel. I have to like walk to DEF CON. So really, if you can start that like logistic uh, chain a little bit earlier, that could really help me uh, in the future, or new people in the future. Thank you. Uh, 
what I would keep, yeah, I think I think I'd have to to voice my agreement that the mentorship program seems absolutely amazing. I I wouldn't change that for a thing. Um, what I would start is maybe start communic or I don't know if necessarily forcing communication, but getting the the mentor mentee communication maybe started earlier because while I feel like I was pretty ready. Um, from the get-go, I definitely could have used maybe a few more practice runs, just a little more time to refine it. But I mean, at the same time, really, how much can you polish a turd before you put it up on stage? At, at some point, <laughs> at some point, you're just you're just doing busy work. Um, in terms of stuff, I would stop. I, nothing yet, but if something comes to mind, I will I will definitely let you know. All right. All right. What to keep? I think that the. Like I said, the, the mentorship program is great. I would, I really love the, the 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 schedule, the the checkpoints, cause it helped it helped me get a sense if I, if I'm progressing, where I should be now. Am I good? Am I ahead? Am I like behind? That was great. And uh, what, what what I would start? I don't know. Maybe, as I said, having a mentor was too as it has been so good. Maybe add a second one, work in Paris to get a second, a second view. I don't know, and I don't. What just that you, what you remove, what you stop? I don't know. I nothing. <laughs> All good. Yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of people saying not to stop anything within mm -hmm. the program because everything works out very well. Definitely keep the check-ins um, because, as even as a mentor, it's really a nice little checkpoint to say like, have you done this, this, and this? Checklists are great. Um, the other thing that I would add is on the mentor side is introductions between the, all of us because many of us just showed up in this room together and found out that we're all mentors. Uh, yes, that's, that's an excellent point right there is uh, uh, as part of the mentorship program, we are, I don't want to say siloed, but exactly. We, we kind of only learned today that we were all mentors together. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would have been a great uh, thing to have these conversations a little bit beforehand and just uh, introductions. And I think that would be, that would be a, a great thing. Um, there was not a lot about the actual program, though, that I would necessarily change. I, it, it really is excellent the way it is, or else I wouldn't be uh, here doing it for almost as long as Phil. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and then just the, the last thing is, um, I know sometimes you know we were asked what our expertise is so that we can be matched up with uh, mm -hmm. the the proper uh, uh, presentation, and I know that I know that they do their best to kind of match you up uh, with uh, with your expertise. Um, I don't know if there's a, a better way to scale that or score that, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I'm, I'm looking at these presentations and I'm like I really 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 want to work with this one. And I know I don't always get what I want, so. <laughs> but I, I don't so, know if that's so, so start giving you whatever you want. Is what uh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is early. Oh, I think uh, things to keep. I think the proving ground uh, program as it is is amazing. Uh, there was a great speaker reception party, so you have the chance to uh, get together and, and meet people. Uh, I think in terms of uh, something to add or something to start will be really cool to have, uh, and I don't know if it exists already, but kind of like a program of how to transition between being a mentee into a mentor or some follow-up past the conference. And I think that will be pretty cool. And in terms of things to stop, I, I cannot think of anything to complain right now. So. Sorry, I apologize. Um, so same same question, just feed it on over and then uh, I've got another question for the audience in general after that. There's a, Damon and I have a joke that we've never found a CFP, uh, CFP program we didn't hate. Um, it's a, so it, the, the one we have is, is it's the least bad we've ever had. It's like democracy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's the worst form of, of, of program management except the other, all the other ones. But, but it's, it's better, it's, it's it is the least bad one we've ever yes, had. Yes, exactly. Um, I would love to do a little bit more coaching on how to submit to a CFP because there are, every year, there are a handful of talks where you look at the title and you go, this could be good, and then you look at the abstract and there's nothing. 
And that always breaks my heart a little bit. It's like there was an attempt. And if, if we had provided you with just a little bit more information, we could have made something beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah no, that's, that, that's definitely something. I think even for the, the broader program that we're looking at yeah, uh, I'd like leveling to give up. Submissions. Yeah. I would love to be, I would love just to have a, a too yeah. many to pick from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for me, you know, obviously I love the program. I'm here because of the program. Um, this, is, this, is, this is so amazing hearing all the people having very similar experiences to me. It's, 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 hard, it's very heartwarming. Um, so I wouldn't change much. I think what I would change is adding more speaking slots, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and right, like putting something together for, because for, like obviously if you're a first time speaker, it's probably your first time writing a CFP. And so we might, we might want to put something on the website or something that says like, this is how you fill out a CFP. Here's a talk, go watch it. For proving ground, you know, if you have questions, email us about the CFP if you don't understand something. So we can make ourselves more available um, within reason to people, first time submitters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are examples online and so forth, but obviously like it's yeah. not. Yeah, but it's an art. It's yeah. definitely an yeah. art. Like I know, I know John's in the audience here. I helped him yeah. write a bunch of CFPs. It's an art. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm just out of curiosity, show of hands in the audience. How many of you have either as a, a you know, had anything to do with the, the Proving Ground program yourselves? Like, uh, OK, I know we got like about a dozen easy here. Yeah. OK, that's awesome. Um, and then of the, rem of, of the other folks, how many are here because you're thinking about having something to do with the Proving Ground? And yep. OK, a couple in the back there. All right. So. Um, I'm going to invite any of you who, who want to answer any of the questions yourselves that I brought up so far. Go ahead and grab that mic right there, and 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 let or or even come up and use this one because we'd love to hear, you know, what you. Because you're in front of the 12 people, who raised their hand. You're all sitting over there together for some reason. It's like you can smell each other, sniff each other out. It's it's kind of kind of eerie actually. But, um, <clears throat> anyone at all. And if you want, you, you can even, if you want to be on camera, you can come up here or you can do it yeah, from back there if you don't. That's fine to go okay. here, I think. <laughs> so um, I presented for the first time here uh, yesterday. So thank you for the opportunity for that. Oh. And I think that for me, one of the things that I found most valuable was just having somebody else to confirm whether or not my idea even makes sense. Uh, I, I was not sure if this was a talk that anybody would want to go to, mm -hmm. if it was either too esoteric or simply not novel enough, um, and, and having somebody to help me figure out what do I emphasize, and yes, this is actually worth speaking about was very helpful. Validation, how do I reach my audience, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, Hi, Max. <laughs> <laughs> is he your, your, your mentee? Awesome. Here. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. I love it. I love it. This is great. Um, okay, so. Uh, one more, one more. Oh, great, yeah, yeah, please, yes. All right, uh, my name is Jonathan Fisher. I first presented um, at a conference in 2022, I think. Now, I didn't directly go through the program, but Phil mentored me. So, in spirit, I came through here. And like you said, it launched for me, and I was able to speak more confidently, I was able to write CFPs more confidently, and then build a community. And so it's been very rewarding for me. But even more so um, from the mentor side of things is my first year being a mentor and being able to get back to other people who want to realize their dream of speaking and coming here specifically to get that start is very rewarding. And it um, it helps me learn more about what I'm doing, what I could do better. Get, and I learned just as much from my mentee as I think she did for me. So, um, but I do have one question for you guys as well. Do you have an idea of how many people have directly been impacted by this mentorship, knowing that it bleeds out into the industry and it's not just contained to this? So, so, I, so is the question the, the, the first order, like people who've actually participated in the program as yeah, opposed like to just be yeah. mentored and right. So it's been run, running at least 12 years. Yeah, so if, I, we, if we do the basic math, let's say 25 talks a year. Yeah. 
I mean, at least 500, and mm -hmm. then, you know, second order, Thousand. Yeah, who knows, right? Yeah, that's that's incalculable, that's really. But so, but he, definitely, yeah. We, I mean, we have recorded you know talks all the way back to 2012. You know, a yeah. couple dozen a year. So. Yeah. So thank you so much for all of your help and making this possible. Okay. So the reason I we're here today is because I love this program. This program is deeply personally important to me as a, a part of what I see. This is our one of our core missions at B-Sides is being able to open up this conversation and this community to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to participate, right? I, I mean, and my, maybe not even as a speaker. There are people probably, I, show of hands, how many of you would have been able to come to this conference if you hadn't been part of this program? One out of all of you, would, two maybe, oh, the, your employer might have sent you or whatever, but like that, and that's pretty typical. Like we, we in, a, in a cohort, Usually, three quarters of them would not ever be able to attend the conference, let alone speak at it, if they weren't participating. I just think it's phenomenal. So, I'm on a mission, and I want you all to help me with this mission. If you're here today, you must care at least a little bit about this. And I want all of you, when you're done with your B-sides, or even maybe not even when you're done, maybe during your B-sides, go out and find two people that you can get to submit to this program next year, okay? Our, our, our process begins in January, and you know, I want, I want to get, as we're saying, I want to fill the rooms. I want to have so many people that we, we need a bigger room. I want you to kick out, you know, breaking ground, and you know, but yeah. Anyway, um, so why don't you guys talk a little bit about what the process looks like, you know, like detail it. You know, we've, we've mentioned it in bits, but I'd love people to know what to expect when they apply. So we start planning in January and we open the call for papers and call for mentors usually February, right around, usually around Valentine's Day. Uh, and then we leave that open for a month, month and a half. Um, once we have, once we close that, we start looking at all the talks. And we actually do sort of a two round vetting or two rounds of, of CFP approval. So the first one, we make sure that you actually are a brand new speaker. You've never spoken at DEF CON, you've never spoken at Black Hat, never spoken at Hack in the Box, any global information conference at all. And we always disqualify about a quarter of the people who apply. Um, once we have that sort of first round of, of review, then we start looking at the papers in earnest. Can I just real quick though? Don't disqualify yourselves, right? right? Let, we'll tell you if you're, no, you're too big for, your, for this program. Real quick. But, sure. You know. uh, he, notice he said major international conferences. Right. Right. If we have a very spoke, short list. Yeah, if you spoke <laughs> at like your local B-sides, right, to, you know, and it's a one-room con, that's not, that's not a disqualifying factor. Or even if it's 400, 500 people, like it's. That's true, yeah, yeah. that's true too, right? So like, like don't, don't think, Oh, I spoke at this conference. I guess I can't ever submit to Proven Ground and get the benefits. No, that's not. Like, let us be the judge. Yeah. Sorry. Did, please continue. I just. So we do that first round of review, and then we start looking papers in earnest, and we narrow it down to as many speaking slots as we have plus two, because we always we we always like to keep a couple in reserve, because inevitably somebody will drop out, somebody will get sick, somebody will have a family emergency. We need to fill those slots, and then we we. Do this. At the same time, we're looking at the mentors. So we look at the papers that we've got, and we say, OK, these mentors have hardware experience. These members have social engineering experience. These are policy people. Who would be a potentially a good fit? Once we have that batch of mentors, and we don't always, we, we try to rotate through. We have, a, we have sort of a repeating cast of characters. We don't try to use everybody every year. And so once we've got that that group of mentors, then we send them a survey, and the mentors actually get some say in whose talk they mentor. So we give them the title and we give them the abstract. We don't tell them who it is. We say, uh, rank these on a scale of one to five. Uh, one being, I have absolutely no idea, I'll do this if I have to, and five being, please, please, please put me in, coach. Uh, once we have that pairing, once we have that s selection, then we pair you off. And then it's basically just sort of watching and making sure everything stays on the rails. We send out checkpoint emails. We make sure things are going well. 
Um, a few times we've had to address some issues, but for the most part, it's sort of just you know making sure everything is staying on the rails and everybody is getting what they need. And then the day before B-sides, we run a program called Proving Ground Pre-Game, which is where we set up the Proving Ground track first, and we get it ready to go, and then we invite the speakers to come in and give their talk, and sort of do a dry run, and then we give them feedback. So everybody who's sitting in there gets to give feedback to the talks who are presenting. And I'm sure for some of you, it's probably one of the most terrifying experiences you've ever had. But I've, I know for a fact that it has had material impact on, on a number of talks. So that's basically it. So there's only one thing I think I, I feel like we maybe left out a little bit here, which is sure. the stipends. Uh, oh, that yes, we provide. Right, right. So speakers get a, it used to be 500 bucks, now it's what, 750 or eight? Uh, it's something like that, yeah. So first time speakers get a stipend to cover their travel and other expenses, uh, which or is something- subsidize it. Subsidize not, it, yeah. Which is something we're only able to do thanks to some very generous donors. Yeah, and, I and, this, and we don't do this for anyone. Yeah. Like we don't do this for keynotes, we don't do this for, right. like this is a nonprofit conference. Everybody's here, you know, out of the, the, the generosity of their hearts and, and their desire to, you know, grow and impact the community. Right. But for these particular folks, we do provide a, right. essentially a scholarship. Exactly. And so yeah, that's that that often will make the, make or break whether or not somebody can come as well. Yeah. All right. So we're you know coming up on time here. Uh, last chance. Is there anything else any of you would like to add? You know to you know any message you want to get out. Put remember this is going out on the tubes. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just to the room. Uh, I want to say thanks to Guy for running the program. Um, I was invited to be the co-chair this year. And I was a little overwhelmed by what that meant because, again, I was a huge fan of the program. I think it is probably one of the most important programs at any con I've ever been to. So I really want to thank you for doing this. I want to thank you for running it. I know running it, running a track is a thankless job sometimes. So I, I really appreciate you doing it because this, this one, like now that I've, I've helped them run it, it's a lot more work than the other. Yeah. Sort of, like there's well, a lot and, more and wrangling cat, cats and. You've been helping me with yes. our, our breaking ground track and other things for you know years, and it's like, yeah, it's still a step function above, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot more work, but it is definitely so much more rewarding to watch people grow into their, their talks and everything. So thank you. So, so thank you so much for running the Can program. Can we round of applause for Guy? This is, yeah. I mean. All right, with that, uh, unless anyone else has something to add? Oh, yeah, on the end, please. Yeah, I want to say the difference between the participant and speaker is huge. And anyone who's thinking about doing the program should definitely do it. Uh, it feels like a slide. Like once you start the journey, it basically like guides you all the way down to become a speaker. I feel like that's what this program is really good at doing. And it's actually very easy once you actually make the first step. So please do so. Thank you. Yep. If you're, if you're on the fence going, well, I don't know if I have, re if you've ever looked at a technical problem and gone, huh, that's weird, you've got a CFP submission. Yeah. You've got to talk in. <laughs> True, yeah. Just apply. It, then you just need to learn to tell the story. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so there you have it, Proving Ground. Um, again, uh, this is one of the, the, the most core, most B-sides things, like right, you know, right up there with pros versus Joes and the way we, you know, teach people for CFP, I mean, or uh, CTF. Like, I love that about this conference that we're, we're always about bringing in and bringing up and, and it's not just, you know, going out and being a hotshot. So, all right, thank you folks. Uh, enjoy the rest of your con.